Good afternoon. Today I'm going to attempt to remove a windshield from a 2003 Murano. Physically there's nothing wrong with the windshield. I just need to remove it so that I can pull a panel off the roof and replace that due to hail damage. Um, in looking on videos online, there were several options on doing this. All of it required an immense amount of labor. Most of them were revolving around a, a knife such as, such as this, and I've got a nice little black blade in there. And those black blades are supposed to be 25% sharper than your typical blade. Whether or not that's true is hard to justify. And a common one seems to be the use of a wire or in some cases a, a nylon line that's uh, ran around the outside of the windows. In order to do that, we have to remove the trim that comes along down the side of the window here and of course across the top. So that's all been removed. Trim is essentially little pieces of rubber here and these rubbers are stuck on when they install the windshield to begin with. So what I ended up trying to do here is uh, create a less expensive version of the $500 to $600 machines and uh, essentially what you have to do basically is get yourself some high test fishing line. Um, the ones that I'm using here is about 50 pound test. Uh, seems to be more than adequate for uh, for this purpose. And I also have uh, what's a, a chip chaser. Now this chip chaser is just designed to, when you're drilling between panels to go in there with that little hook there and you just uh, pull the swarf that lands in between the two panels out before you uh, rivet the panels together. You could probably make something like this out of spring steel. It's pretty simple. All it needs to be is a hook on the end. Now that uh, device, bench, essentially you just insert it right there and you insert your uh, fishing line through that or onto that hook and basically pull it inside the vehicle. Okay, so we're just gonna feed this through the windshield. So basically I've got that little slot cut and you can see that the blade comes right up to the top there. So we're just gonna hook onto that blade. Like so, pull it through. line up here take fishing line wrap it around the steering wheel tie it off fishing knot that you like, tie it off, any self-respecting fisherman will be able to, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. So any self-respecting fisherman will be able to find a, a knot that works for them. So now we're going to just feed this around and down. Now this is where I originally cut through. So there's all sorts of little pieces of rubber that are going to come out. Just going to feed this down and around the, underneath the windscreen and around the back side of the window. So as you can see we're on the back side of the window right there. And that's going to go all the way across. Now to do that we just simply well, this one's really simple because you've got the back side of the window is exposed, or the bottom side of the windshield is exposed. So we just go all the way around the bottom. Hook across the bottom of this piece again. Go up to the top. Make sure we're on the bottom side of the windscreen. And we'll just feed it all the way around. down to that
make sure you're far down on that rubber so that you're not actually just catching the windscreen. So we're coming down to the bottom side of that rubber. And then we'll use the same chip chaser. Just make a little loop so you have something to grab. Pull it through. Now I'm just going to feed enough of this line through to reach over to the other side. So in an attempt to remove this with a knife, I basically stripped out the interior pieces along this panel here, and the same on the other side over here. Now, in about 25 minutes with that knife, I managed to clean off a spot that was equivalent to between that point and that point down there. Now, continuing that, it would have taken me about four hours and lots of cursing to get it out. So off to uh, YouTube I went for other solutions to this problem. Okay, so what I've done here is I've set this up to show you how little pressure is required to, to pull this through. We're dealing with 50 pound line, but in order to pull this line through, it's about 15 pounds before it starts to move. And there's 15, 16, 17, and the item is starting to move and around. So what's happening now is this fishing line is essentially cutting through the seal. And when we're wind up again, I've transferred it off of that uh, fishing line onto just a quarter inch ratchet, just to, something you can wind up the extra fishing line on and still be able to pull. Is it or not? Okay. Corners are the tough spot. Quite a bit more pressure is required to go around the corners. The amount of pressure required to do this is not a lot. If you run into a lot of pressure, stop because there's probably a snag somewhere along the line. Right here, we're running into a bit of pressure. So you're just going to work it slowly to get past the... In this case here, we have an extra chunk of glue that's interfering with us making a smooth cut. So as soon as we get past that extra chunk of glue, then again we see that it goes very smoothly again. We're going to remove our remote control or remote starter and just continue. And like I say, this is not a lot of pressure, so it does not require a $500 machine to do what you can do with a basically a $2 chunk of fishing line. No scraped knuckles. Now 
Now again, when you get close to the corners, we do get uh, higher area or higher stress areas here. So again, we're just going to work it slowly and cut through what is probably just a tremendous amount of glue. Okay, I'm going to check just to see what's going on here because this is not nearly as smooth as what it has. So let me check outside just to check, see where we're at. That's quite a bit more pressure than previous. But it is cutting through. Again, you don't want to pull too hard, otherwise you do run the risk of breaking the line and also breaking the windscreen. I'm just using the extension as a little bit of mechanical advantage into the corner here to get a straighter pull at it. And that cut through that. So now we're back to a normal amount of pressure. Lots of glue in the corner here. Another thing you want to be aware of is this is a sharp edge. So you want to make sure that you're pulling perpendicular to that sharp edge. Otherwise you do run the risk of just cutting the uh, line. And that should be good enough here. We can now continue along this way. Okay, so now that we're getting down to the corner again, this is where it's going to get stiff. We're going to use the, and try and use the uh, extension to try and leverage through that tight area. And that's pretty much it for three quarters of the windshield. So it's loose from that corner over there all the way up and around and down to this corner here. The biggest issue we have right now is trying to make sure that when we
cut along that inside edge that we don't damage any of the dashboard. So my uh, thoughts on this are going to be to go from the other side. There's one possibility. The other possibility is just to pull it straight up against the windshield and see if it comes across. So we're going to try that first because, well, we're we're here and I've got plenty of fishing lines with the brakes. I can certainly just try a different method. idea here is to go as slow as you can in the corners just so we don't break the windshield end or the line. What we have now is a free windshield. We've uh, successfully trimmed all the way across the top and down and around and through on the bottom here. The bottom is a bit of a bitch because uh, it's thicker glue on this particular windshield uh, and the corners are always a bit of a bitch. But my recommendation if you're going to try this is try it with a 100 pound test. The 50 pound test does work, but we snapped the string quite a few times on this bottom section here to get it out. So uh, again, it's just a matter of amount of force that you need to cut through the glue. So if you could find the 100 pound test in the braided line, like spider wire or whatever, that's probably your Okay, best. so here's the removed windshield. And as you can see, along the bottom side of this, the retaining glue is fairly substantially thick. And then when you get into the edges, it's quite a bit thinner. So the reason it gave us such a problem was simply because of the thickness of the glue on this bottom edge. And that's quite a bit thicker, as you can see. So, yeah, if you're going to do it, do it with the highest poundage test of line you can find. But it does work. One completely unbroken, unscathed windshield, no bruised knuckles.